So on today's Talking Mods, I'm going to cover um, Five Illegal Mods Part 2. So we did the first one and there was a, a good outreach from you guys that have reached out to me with other illegal mods that need to be made aware. So this is for you guys and uh, let's jump into it. Hey guys and welcome back to another Talking Mods. So on today's video, um, it is actually part two. Um, a long time ago we did the five illegal mods that you can't do to your vehicle and we talked about them. We wanted to do a second one for you guys so it informs uh, fellow enthusiasts so that you are aware um, when you guys are dealing with whatever modifications you want to do or planning on doing so that you just are aware of it in advance. Okay, so before we begin, um, please, I want you guys to hit that like button. It really does help. Um, we are trying to grow this channel. Uh, it's something that we are trying to do is to reach out to enthusiasts and educate them about different components of parts, industry news, all kinds of information. And again, if you guys need anything for your vehicles, this is our shameless plug. Go to Mod Bargains. That is our website. So the number one, uh, it's in no particular order. So the first one is bright lights. And um, a lot of uh, guys who have off-road vehicles, they have like the rails on top of their trucks. Um, you have those rally lights. Uh, there's a lot of different ways in which additional lights are added or they're powerful, right? And they're above like the, the standard line that is necessary. Those are that you can get easily get a ticket for it. And it's pretty much illegal in most states. It is necessary when you are off-roading from time to time. I understand it. And it is necessary in different situations. I have definitely seen my need for it, especially at nighttime or if you're doing off-road uh, driving. But um, the problem is that if you have really, really bright lights and you're driving, let's say on a road or on a highway, and this is why you don't leave your brights on, it basically um, will go right into the opposing traffic, can cause an accident, um, can blind someone. Uh, hopefully you don't do that. And uh, well, just, just be aware of it before you start investing a lot into lights if you're, um, unless it's you have a purpose for it. The second one um, that I think is pretty prevalent. A lot of guys mentioned it in the comments. It had to do with um, the license plate area. So the license plate cannot be covered. Number one, I've seen like these like film covers kind of reflectors so that the reason that the reflectors is because a lot of like cops when they are trying to track you, they typically point to your late uh, to your license plate as a measure of area. So they try to have a reflector so that the laser gun or whatever doesn't read it. All right. This one I think is pretty obvious. I got a ticket for this one myself. Um, it's tint, um, anything that's over 25%. So tint that's over 25% will get you a ticket. So that's the easiest way you're going to get a, a ticket as in at least here. Um, that's happened to me. I have seen on a different scale where there are certain conditions that certain people have with their eyes where it, they have a doctor's uh, note and they are allowed to have that. That's a very rare case. I actually drove, um, one of our clients Corvettes the other day. Um, per his uh, permission and I had a very very hard time because it was so dark even on the front um, I would not do that on my normal driving because I felt like it diminished my ability to see so that was the third one now uh, the fourth one is one that is interesting because it kind of almost targets a certain group in our segment but it's anything that's past the fender. So when you have wheels past the fender, I guess if you had extended fenders, it's okay. But having past the fenders um, sticking out like tires and so forth, especially I've seen it on trucks, they will give you a ticket for that. It is considered illegal. So try to be, um, if you want to get to the max level, flush within the fender, try not to, to pass it. Now, this one's a really, I think, very, very interesting. Um, it has to do with um, lifting. <laughs> So again, this is more for the off-road guys, or it can be lowering as well. So this is state dependent. Now every state is different. So I recommend looking at your own state's um, legislation. I couldn't, I just picked a couple here because I thought they were very interesting. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Connecticut, um, if you live in Connecticut, your max range is four inches, four inches. I don't know how they determined it, but if you live in Georgia, it's a two inch max. What? So if you're driving from Connecticut and you had a four inch lift and you go to Georgia, well, you just passed it. So be careful. In New Hampshire, for example, you are not allowed to lower your vehicle 
at all. In Georgia, again, it's two inches on max, but in California, the limit here is five inches. So the max you can go in California is five inches. So it's kind of just funny. It's, I don't know if it's funny, but it's kind of interesting that every state has something different. If you're doing a cross country trip, uh, try to be aware of what state you're gonna be crossing just in case uh, somebody really, really wants to just be, you know, be a jerk and give you a ticket. Uh, those are the five that I gave you guys. Um, I'm sure there are others that you guys can still think of. Um, obviously, I'll look for it in the comments. I try to respond. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It does help us. Um, and obviously, hitting the like like I asked before, it helps us all out. Again, I will see you on the next Talking Minds. <music>